at Powerhouse, we have it shortcutted to control control tilde. Mm -hmm. Is that the squiggly line? So if you um, combo of lasso tool and control tilde is the best because you can select certain areas. You get a nice taper. Oops. Well, not. You can also use the arrow tool to kind of pull at it. And you can smooth the whole thing in general, but sometimes you'll find it blows out your line if you've got, you know, a kind of crazier line going. And then you just try and select that whole thing and it'll blow out areas that you don't want. So you'll always want to use lasso tool to kind of smooth those out, select the areas. You'll kind of start to, if you play around with it, you'll learn where to select to get the bend that you want or the curve. So. Usually the ends you can smooth out to like nice little tips. So anything that's holding on frame for like more than four or five, I would say, you know, just run through, make sure you don't have big blobby ends to your line. Just make it look nice graphically. Now we're going to move to a big Mickey style cleanup, which is a little different than traditional. But just for an example, uh, depending on the animator, you can get something that's you know done in one line like that, or you can get something a little bit looser with several you know several lines. And then it's up to you to kind of choose a line, but just commit to whatever you're choosing. So if you're going to go with you know the outside line here, don't on the next frame start getting you know skinnying out his arm by going smaller and smaller. Just make sure you're keeping that consistent. Um, usually when I'm giving given a scene, I start by playing through the scene, like scrubbing through the frames, just getting an idea of what's the character's motion and, you know, noting parts where, you know, this holds and then he's got the follow through animation right there. For the so I, want, I usually make a note of that when I'm working, just by when I start up with my cleanup layer, if there's a hold. I would just make a frame. And sometimes I'd even go ahead and clean up that area and group it just so that when I get to that frame, I go, oh yeah, he's gonna hold here, so I don't need to touch that area. I don't want to clean it up again. And I will start with this little Mickey. So I played through, you know, he's obviously busting out his chest. where I use groups. So I always use my, um, my settings are usually a line tool at some bright color set to hairline mode. Because um, if you don't, if you use a thicker brush, I mean a thicker line tool setting, you might get more holes. It's easier to like miss little areas where your lines might overshoot and cut off an area. And it'll just save you some time to not have that Usually I turn, like this is pretty bright on the outline mode, I would go ahead and change this to something a little less obtrusive. Let's do a little light pink. And I work with outline modes on usually and the uh, onion skin outline mode on as well. I usually just make a circle of onion. Sorry, if you have the oval tool primitive thing set up, I usually break that keyboard shortcut because I never use oval tool <laughs> primitive so it drives me crazy. So I start with a, a circle, usually I'm just kind of on all this so start with a couple circles for his ears. I might change the color just for visually for me to tell like that one's not and then I would group these into individual groups by hitting control G. That's the shortcut for sh groups. And once it's in a group, you can actually just pull this um, and adjust them just like you would with an oval tool.
triangles. Well, actually, first, before I do that, I should set it up. <laughs> because the Mickey characters are so graphic, we usually love the oval tool. Like, use that as much as possible for eyes and ears and things. You don't want to try and freehand uh, an oval tool drawing. Animators aren't even freehanding that. <laughs> They're yeah, using yeah. the, the straight mm -hmm. to make it perfect. So we broke them up. That so, so, yeah, so now I can group this with the carrot in there. And his little carrots always face the same way. So You don't want them to cut too far into the eye and be too big. Are they always closest to the viewer? Um, it's no, not it's really a set thing. <laughs> it's, it's, is it a highlight? It's, it's oh. not. It's just like generally kind of more appealing that way a lot of the time. You know, yeah. if they're three quarter or profile, um, but if they're more front than I think it's either. So. Once I get all my circle shapes sort of uh, I'm missing these buttons. So once I get all the circles sort of set up and in little groups. Oops. Sorry, I have um, I use shift tilde because my hands are usually too small and it my fingers out, <laughs> trying to hit the control there. So yeah, once I get the little circles all in place for the first frame or so, I'll go through one round that's just setting up circles. So yeah, make another frame, F6 to make a keyframe, that's the same. And then I can just grab these circles and I don't have to redraw them. I just got to get them in position. I'm not even sure if this is how I wrote this on the paper. So I'm scrubbing through to make sure that like these circles, even though on this drawing it looks like it's staying in the same place, the um, body's kind of shifting a little, so I just kind of make sure that I'm matching the movement, what's happening to the body in general. When you're scrubbing through, you know, if you have um, the basic knowledge of, you know, ease-ins, ease-outs, settles, and things like that, you'll kind of know what the animator's wanting to happen, even if maybe the rough isn't doing it, um, or has several frames that don't really make sense with that movement. set to black at 60% smoothing, and I usually work with the five brush, you know, which would be too small here. It's always good to have your model sheet up so you know when your lines are too small. You know, kind of, kind of compare it. I usually would put the model either on a different frame in the background so that I'm making sure that they are lining up or, you know, just 
draw kind of on the model sheet and make sure that um, on this and make sure that it's lining up. Uh, this would probably require a bigger brush. But for areas like this, I would go ahead while I'm doing in the line tool mode and I can see this and just do the mouths right there and then switch to my um, brush. Switch to my pencil. Switch to my pencil tool. Oh, it's on a, it's not on. Oh, it's not on smooth, sorry. Yeah, okay, watch that. <laughs> it always defaults to that. Yeah, <laughs> for some reason. Do you also work with your line tool at 62 for smoothing? Um, yes. I usually just keep it at 60. Uh, that's my personal preference. And you guys can keep it at whatever. I um, overshoot my lines, in case you didn't notice that, but just it's going to go all the way through and these are going to be deleted in the end so it doesn't really matter if you keep it you know it definitely ensures there's no gaps yeah you want to make sure you're not uh, leaving a hole which will cause problems when you go to fill so mm -hmm. working um, usually if it's something uh, yeah I guess I kind of fix as I go in general like if I don't land a line or this curve bends out I'm kind of making sure it's working now versus when I go to color about these groups, um, the reason that I'm sh overshooting into that is that eventually I can just fill that group and when I break it apart, it'll cover up that extra tail. I mean, I can go through and delete it, but that actually works faster. Just lay it on I'll show you when I get the color. things like that. That's why I always work with the onion skin mode on. So yeah, so once I get you know, like all my lines in, and this one I didn't move the eyes because they're not there. That's Sam's way of indicating a closed eye. It's like these half moon things. Um, I might not make it as bad as he did that on this one. Yeah, so once I get all that, I use the uh, multiple selection tool, multiple frames, select multiple frames, edit multiple frames, 
I'll use that to go through, select all, and then break apart my groups. So that's control B. And that just kills all the lines, I mean all the groups. And then I can go in and delete this extra stuff. It's not a problem. Like little ones like that might be a problem that get missed. Um, like if you've got, say, Gus and he's got his circle face, and then you've got the mask, and it's real close to here, and you cut off a little section that's going to cut off a part of their face. You got to watch for that. So um, just leave the pencil tools that'll that'll cause problems later on. You don't want to, you know, accidentally remove a part that's going to break the shape. Oops, right outside. Um, so now these are broken. I can start filling areas. Oops. It's got a half close eye. Oops. Um, my brush mode is usually always set to paint behind so that I don't break the layer. I can paint behind here, um, paint behind the line, okay, and not have it, um, you know, break that line. Then I gotcha. can just select the like ends of it and delete them, Things like that. So one way to work would be to do the interior lines at this point, but you might get a lot of holes if you're, you know, not following that line properly. I don't actually ever do this. <laughs> That's just one way the paint behind would work. Um, normally what I would do is go to fill. Yeah, and I'll make these little colors. So you got sample, some of this um, will look black, but it's actually a different color. His nose is that purpley skin color. That. Um, and I usually do, you know, just a pass through with all one color so that I'm not having to reselect that. And these are these little holes I'm talking about. You have to kind of fill. And then you go to white for his face. And you have to get those little carrots if you didn't delete them in the group. I can see that that's where the black line from the previous, or the, the frame that's going to be after is. And so I can kind of know not to like make that go too high just based on that. And that allows you to, and blacks are like the worst area to color. pick a different scene <laughs> to show. Well, and I just realized this now. Scrolling through here, that line kind of just pops on. I think it's part of his expression. So, 
once I'm done with all of the interior line work, I go through and do the um, edit all frames again. Select all, delete all of my lines, and go through. I make one last pass that's just smoothing, just to get you know areas that don't look so hot. I did some of this before, but this is the general idea. If there were lines that I had, you know, neglected the first time around, or if I had more to draw. And then if you notice there's like a hole there um, and the color didn't go through. In this mode, I would also be working with paint behind again. And then I can select, um, select the color and just kind of fill that hole real okay. quick. So this is what I, where I would um, mostly focus on the frames that were on screen for more than you know four or five frames, and focus on getting those nice. And then if I have anything that is growing up, like the line weight's not the same, I might kind of fix that too. Can you know the roughs? Yes. Sometimes you'll miss stuff. I think I missed something the other day, actually, when I sent you something. So. Uh, yeah, in general, sit back to work. Yeah. That's for I mean, there's so many shadows, passes that animators. I do yeah. that usually I notice something like that. And I guess most of my notes are about changing volumes and using groups. Just uh, keep in mind what's well, like, you know, right here, the that interior line, the paint one, obviously it's, like, on the nose and in the arm, but, you know, on things that, um, you know, that are, that are single colors about, uh, you know, some if, if he was going to make a fist, especially, like, the Mad Doc with you know, his glove and stuff, or, um, or I guess, you know, Mickey's glove, too, like, um, you know, handling, you know, handling cleanup for that where, uh, you know, your order of like when you use that brush tool is it just the same thing like what you did with the nose or um, you know do you keep those solid shapes the whole time and go back and do all your your interior paint lines at the end? Yeah, like I would um, have everything filled. What do you do? Because you're kind of showing simultaneously stuff, I guess. Do you do passes like line tool groups fill then interior lines, or do you kind of do what you got? Yes, um, I do the pass. The first pass is usually the circle tool with groups. Um, that, that's something I've recently discovered from talking to Yevgeny. And then the next pass is the um, just the freehand lines with some of the black interior lines, the ones that are usually enclosures like eyes, mouths, things like that. Um, so I can see the roughs while I'm working. Um, and then then I go back and do the fill, a fill pass and then an interior interior line pass, and then like one last pass that's kind of just smoothing, making sure I missed hole, I didn't miss any holes or you know things like that. Just mm -hmm. making sure everything looks good. And uh, I can't stress you know using onion skin and scrubbing through. You know if you're not scrubbing through your frames, it's the, I mean it's the easiest way to catch you know where something's gonna jump. And uh, it helps also, and you can kind of see on here, uh, a lot of the time, uh, cleanup artists will uh, darken the stage color to something where those holes will shine through, like change the stage color of your file. Yeah. 
it's sorry, it's um, defaulted. Yeah, just need some crazy color that you can really see through some of these characters. Look at that board from Becky Simpson's face, white. Yes. Um, what I'll do first is go through and show you how to handle a, a scene like a Jasper that's kind of a combination of like, you know, pump it in and clean up, or at least my, my approach to it. The, uh, settings on here. I always go to the uh, uh, Wacom properties. Um, I usually put a little more resistance towards the firm size on the, the stylus pressure because it seems like the lines will explode less if you do that. And it's always freaked me out that there's like no save or anything on this window. You just close out of it and it remembers. Um, okay, and this is a scene I did recently with. Uh, Jasper, and I'll show you like my approach to that would be I would first, you know, watch the the Swift a few times, and then you know, kind of scrub through to familiarize yourself with it, like Steph said. And what I would do first is determine like where you can reuse any uh, symbol items, like the uh, the head and stuff. And what I would do. First First is go through on a layer and place all the uh, um, symbol heads that I could. Let's see, go away, neck, and I guess his uh, neck is on a separate layer. What is on his face? Uh, he's covered in baked beans. Believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. It made it makes sense in context, I guess. Um, and there was a there's a, there was a symbol set up for that, for you know the standard three quarter and front views and stuff. So what I did, and you can do this if it's uh, if it's just moving quickly and there's like no dialogue and blinking and stuff. You can throw all the head symbols like eye, ears, mouth, everything else on one layer so that you can just easily manipulate it around and not have to drag like 30 layers from your timeline around. You know, if you had to, you could even go in and uh, change the <clears throat> change the the mouth instance if you really needed to. But it's just you know simpler this way. I find if you're dragging them all around at once, and he's just moving around without talking. So what I would do first is place all the symbol heads that I could, or reused symbols, and that way you can um, set them to outline in a less obnoxious color hopefully when you're doing the actual cleanup and that way you can tell where you need to stop drawing your actual cleanup lines because it's hidden behind something else and you can you know leave like little rough finishes and not worry about making it perfect where it's hidden behind you know the symbol or whatever. And I've just got some general tips to follow for traditional animation like you know keep doing it, but keep keep all your layers locked except the one you're working in because it's pretty easy to like if you bucket a color accidentally, you know, overwrite something you've already cleaned up and colored and turn it, you know, you'll, you'll scroll back later and it'll be like solid black or whatever and you've lost that frame of cleanup. So keep everything locked at all times if possible. And what I would do after um, getting all the symbols in place is sort of a uh, determine how you would break it up into layers. Like for this one, see how his, uh, his belly and back leg are kind of holding still there? I broke it up into, uh, you know, we're reusing this same body and just moving it around a bit. And then the only thing you need to uh, redraw every time is the legs that go on top of that. So you just, Basically, you're just trying to be as efficient as possible. You know, you, laziness, efficiency, there's a fine line. You've got to find the balance there, <laughs> as I like to say. And you're just trying not to redraw things that you don't have to and, you know, reuse as much as possible, whether it be symbols or something you've already cleaned up that you can lasso and throw down and reuse it without redrawing it and then maybe, you know, like skew it. If, if you have to, to make it work. If it was just moving to the next frame, you can just easily change your rotation point wherever it needs to be from and, you know, as necessary, just make it go where it needs to go. Um, kind of 
kind of out of order here, but uh, if if you have uh, shortcuts that you need to move around on your keyboard, feel free to you know change them from the defaults. Because I'm left-handed, I can't really use Control Z because I'm like you know <laughs> bumping into my arm here. So I switched it to be on this side of my keyboard, uh, right next to the, the scrolling keys. So I can just be quickly you know undo and scroll back and forth without lifting my hand up. It's pretty efficient. Uh, go through and do all your outlines first. Some of these uh, tips in here are just things I've kind of taught myself over the way. That's the most efficient way to do things. Uh, you can do it on as many layers as you need to. Um, you can quickly change things like Steph was showing you with the edit multiple frames and you know, change your, your colors or you know, if you need to break apart symbols or whatever, you can do that quickly and easily. And you can also re-symbolize things that, that you create if they're going to be reused a bunch of times, which keeps the file size of the flaw down and, you know, keeps the playback from getting bogged down, especially if there's, like, huge backgrounds like there are in some of these scenes. And uh, just, you know, name it something that's specific to that scene so that it won't accidentally get replaced in, you know, the, the main movie when it's all compiled together at the end so that you, you don't end up with things like, I think one of the best ones years ago was uh, Buddy Bear ended up with a wheel for an eye at one point because <laughs> someone hadn't renamed a symbol. Uh, okay. And uh, without actually going through and doing any because this one's already been done, that's just kind of my approach to uh, the combination puppeted traditional type stuff. Yeah, and then there's always like portions you can reuse from the symbols, like, you know, I kind of just lassoed some of the, the chunks of beans from, you know, the ones that had been created, and then on these in-between heads just kind of shifted them around and made do with things that had already been created for the most part. Uh, so I'm cleaning up something completely from the beginning. Uh, the way I like to work for some, you know, serious cleanup, good old school, gotta draw everything out in every frame. I like to work zoomed in as close as possible because the, the closer you're zoomed in, uh, the, uh, the smoother your line will be, I find. It usually takes me a couple few passes, but That. And then if you need to uh, you know, tweak it, you can do the same thing Steph was showing you with like smoothing or kind of manually uh, grapple the ends around. And that'd be a good setting for that line because I'd like it to be all on screen if possible, like I said. And that's that's where the, the uh, firmer tip feel comes in where it's not totally blowing out all over the place. They usually get a false start and have to redo it a few times. Plus there's not usually 20 people looking over my shoulder <laughs> making me nervous. Um, what do is get your whole arm involved and draw out the whole line. Eh, one of these times I'll get it. Usually does not take me this long, promise me. Let's call it good enough for now. <laughs> uh, but then I would just basically go through and do, you know, all the lines in na that neighborhood that were that similar size. You can kind of see in the uh, diagram I've put in there how, there we go, that's better. I kind of work like, like this. When it needs to be like real super tight and clean and then I'll just kind of, you know, with the magnet on kind of, uh, which is not on. <laughs> kind of just uh, make the points come together and then just clip off the, the ends. That way you get, you know, a nice taper. And you'll avoid those horrible, like, you know, say you start here and you get like that big glob where it joins up or whatever. So you don't have to worry about those. You can just cut them off and, you know, do the same. If, if the line is nice and fat, you don't need to, like, necessarily... You don't need to necessarily go over the edge with every one of them, but you know, like when you're working quickly, some of them end up over the, the edge of it and some of them don't.
and then sometimes you didn't quite, uh, you know, get those two corners to meet, you can kind of just grab the, the center and kill it that way. And then I thought this was a, a good example to use because it's got the whole uh, lines that go behind other lines dilemma, and I'm sure if you've ever tried to, you know, do like something that passes behind something else, and then you do, you know, those, it looks pretty bad. So what I would do in that situation is, you know, just lay down the line that uh, goes behind there. something to do with it. I usually put my smoothing up around close to 80. it or in the interior that don't you don't want you just quickly get rid of that you can use that same method on the Mickey stuff with your line work if you change the colors of the line tool you can select easier and delete them like that so you get the idea of that um, so you know, it's basically how I work especially if it needs to be really good looking and clean for a, a project like this. This is just uh, the one that I, I set up to do the uh, screenshots off of here. Um, I'll show you what I was talking about with the, uh, the hands here. Like sometimes you need to work zoomed in, you know, or at least I work in zoomed in far enough that the maximum brush size is thinner than what you've done previously. And then what you, what you would do after you uh, snip off all the excess points and stuff is go uh, expand fill. I don't know what they've got it. Oh, that's way too much. Try like 0.3 for this. And then, you know, then it matches uh, what you've done previously. So you can zoom in as close as you need to to get the uh, correct thickness. This right. to, to be able to uh, see what you're doing. Get a good clean line for that, and uh, I guess I can uh, move on to a couple things about uh, the colors here. Here's what uh, they were talking about before with setting up a little palette where it's easy to just eye drop your colors off of without going onto some tiny little spot that's or, or outline that's hard to grab. This is a, a thing that's really useful that some people may not know about, so I will show you it. Uh, what you want to do, if you want to change all of one color throughout an entire scene quickly to another color, is you go, um, I even have it in here somewhere and I don't recall, it's under, uh, yeah, control F should bring up your find and replace menu. And if you select color, then it'll ask you for, you know, the old color. Let's say we want to change his entire body color. Let's pick some random obnoxious thing and make him Barney. Then you go uh, find and replace all. And bam, there you go. You don't have to bucket it or anything. Through the whole scene, it will change it. So. Just make sure it's not very handy sometimes. Elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you're not changing something you don't want to change along with that. The, um, 
the expand fill, um, you can also inset, which is, you know, makes your lines thinner, but that works really awesome for interior lines on a big Mickey. If you're, you know, you bring your, or you send me your Swift, and I'm like, oh, your lines are too thin, like, can you thicken up your lines a bit? Instead of having to redraw all your lines, just select all your lines, expand fill, you know, by a certain play around with the percentage or whatever to get it what you need to. Um, the only thing is if you inset working the way that I do with the uh, selection or the paint paint and selection, it'll inset and leave holes so then you don't have to paint behind the fill at all. Yeah. But you can keep your lines on a separate layer if you want. Um, you just have to adopt, I mean, play around with what you, <laughs> what works for you. Stuff like uh, colored outlines like Jasper's mask there, you know, I would I was just cleaning up in one color originally. This is a good instance of where you would uh, use the the paint selection to just change this portion of the outline color. You know, let's say he was let's say it was like that, and we have the colors a little bit here. What, what I would do is. You know, just select the outline. Make sure your uh, paint selection mode is on, and then you kind of just close off at the the junctions there. And that might not be all of them, but to give you the idea, then once you've you know close off where it joins to the other colors, you can just kind of bucket in and just do the uh, portions that you need to be that color. Awesome. Yeah, much faster. So if you see here, you got Mickey, he's got a little one cycle. And if you go into it, now this is um, Evgeny's while he's working. Um, he's got basically every part oh, of the body on a different frame. But um, it's an interesting way to work, but he, you know, he focuses, when he starts, he do a hand layer, you know, and then all through the, the scene, he just focuses on that front hand. So, and usually he would keep these in groups, I think, and you can kind of see he's actually not really, um, I guess that this isn't the best example because we don't want, you know, that same solid hand kind of moving around, but um, this is um, one that he kind of got away with. <laughs> um, but yeah, like his eyes are on a separate layer. He keeps that, I think these are all our Yeah, see, so he's got groups set up, and he just moves these groups around on different frames. And then he'll either do, like, a line layer that's just all, so if you look, um, Mickey doesn't have, other than what's in, you know, his head group or whatever, he'll go back and do all the other lines on a separate layer on top, just basically drawing them in wherever he needs a line. So yeah, so he would just draw them in on this layer. Another thing that he could do um, from here is he could actually just do lines in between layers. So say he needs, um, I'm trying to see where they're in this. Uh, this is hard to explain on this thing. But say he had, you know, Mickey's head on this layer, um, I'll make it a bright color so you can see it. Then on another layer, he's got the body, and it's the same color. So we need to add a an interior line there. He'd have on a separate layer, and you know he could just draw that there on that layer underneath, and you know the head will hide it. 
or you could even draw on the same head layer with the paint behind. Mm -hmm. but basically, he, he gets all of his stuff looking the way he wants it, and then when he's done, he would flatten all of this, and he showed me this. I uh, make a new layer you know, with all his frames. Yeah, he, what he would do is he'd turn on, you know, turn off the layers that he doesn't want, so this rough one, hide that, select multiple layers, select all, and then he's got his groups, you can see that, and then he just kind of turns that off, and that leaves the selection on, so then he can just, on this first frame, you know, um, hit control X to cut, and he would go to that, you know, his new layer frame, this will be the final cleanup. And paste in place, and he just go through, oops, I wasn't supposed to do that. See, the thing is, when they're selecting multiple frames, if you don't click anywhere, all your layers are already going to be selected, so he can just keep going like this, copy on that new frame, paste in place, and then if you arrow over, And that's after final approval, like, so, you know, once I say, yeah, it's good, go ahead, you know, then he'll do his final method, that way he doesn't lose. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a tool, an extension that you can get that is merge layers, and it will, uh, will basically, anything you have unlocked, flatten the layers down. So that would be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't actually used it, but Frank says it should work exactly the same without having to do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's Evgeny's method. I think it's pretty awesome as far as, you know, and then, you know, once he's got all of these on one layer, then he breaks up his groups, so. Then it's just paint, straight paint right there. No groups. Oops, I left off his line work. Because I had that off, but. Yeah, that's Evgeny's kind of method, and he works all in groups to keep, you know, like I said, areas that he likes just keeps them and then it's like it's easier to, to tweak things too if someone says hey could you do this with the hand I mean they're all on one layer so mm -hmm. he doesn't have to worry about bumping other lines and body and stuff like that yeah that's true mm -hmm. I guess it's I mean it, it definitely seems like it would help a lot I'm not used to doing it yet but mm -hmm. if I can get to that point where I'm going to be putting everything on layers yeah it's a, I mean a lot of it's what's good that you know everybody you know we heard stuff and Cindy's and Looking at you, Yannis, is that I mean, uh, the moral is, is that the fundamentals are all there, but there's different techniques for different scenes, you know, and um, certain complexities that you, know, you probably kind of mix and match a lot of these techniques as you're working. Yeah, like I might not make as many layers as he does, mm -hmm. but it looks crazy on when you bring it up. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if there's like <laughs> four other characters in there. Yeah, <laughs> everyone has like. Some people, when they do their line tool, they, they do their line pass, they'll just duplicate that layer and only color in one of the layers. That way they and you know guide out the other one. So then if they need their line tools back, they can just, yeah. you know, Genius. pull them back up. <laughs> and they, ha they haven't deleted them yet, so that's one thing to do. This is a, a straighten tool. I didn't say that, but I don't usually use it except to make circles. So if you um, have, if you draw like some crazy ass circle, where is that straight? And you kind of straighten it, it just straightens it into a circle. Or it's good for really straight lines too. Yeah, or really straight lines. Um, I don't know how to, oh, um, I guess he could be any, if he had like a fish or something. This is the most fucked up fish I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did a much better example for me and I'm just trying to recreate what he was doing. <laughs> but, um, so if he had this fish, he would turn, he, the same thing, everybody kind of changes their outline mode to something less obtrusive. You're not gonna blind yourself while working. Yeah. And then um, he goes in and he actually does all the circle areas. He starts with a group. So you, if you hit Control G without anything there, it already makes a group. And then he'll work with the line tool set to black, or set to red, I guess. And then um, he sets his line tool to kind of the size of his traditional line that he'd like. Um, so usually I think he works at one, just one, and then he 
we'll just um, do line tools and pull the curves out so that it's not very fat. So you can pull them. Fish like that, all in, um, all with like nice curves. And then he'll convert all that to um, fill by going to modify shape, convert lines to fill, and then that becomes his um, his fill layer, and then he can pull at it, you know, make little points. It's not yeah, taper. Yeah, do the tapers here. So he's like, you know, when he gets to a point like, yeah, I'm happy with this part, then he exits the group and makes a new group. And, you know, if he has to do, well, actually, he can go in here and turn that to black. And, you know, if he does have to work with a brush, he says that he always works at 200 or 400. It's close, kind of like Cindy works really close. And he doesn't use any smoothing at all to get his line to be as close to a pencil as possible. So he'll just... sure that this is more horrible than you. But then he goes through and he uses the same thing, lasso tool, to smooth it out. To be fair, uh, without smoothing, when you first draw the line, there's no accuracy issues when uh, smoothing is off. Your lines will hit exactly where you draw them initially, which is nice. Unfortunately, they are incredibly pixelated. If you mm -hmm. Yeah. Out. That's apparently how he does all of it. And then, you know, when he shoots through, he does the same thing. He shoots through. Well, smooths it and then cuts it off like Cindy does. So that's a group, yeah. Basically, he'd do the whole thing as groups, just sections of lines grouped together, and then at the end, just do his method of, you know, um, breaking them all apart. Yeah, that's how it works. Those are the basics of cleanup, and they basically apply to, I mean, even if you're doing a style like traditional Epic Mickey. Um, you know, just knowing things like volumes, line quality, and uh, line weight, things like that. It's consistency, stuff like that. It's general all around for any kind of cleanup you're doing. Point is to make it look pretty. Cool, guys. Well, thank right. you. That was awesome.